Welcome back, everybody. This is a this will be a very this will be a very short video. We just want to take a look at molecular and empirical formulas. The they tend to get confused very uh, very often. Notice in in class, but there's a really easy way to break this down. So let's let, <clears throat> let's think about this. The essentially the empirical formula will just be the formula that has the simplest ratio and of course that would be the simplest ratio of atoms okay no matter what I don't care what form we're talking about so you understand fractions ratios so you know um, four eighths is not the simplest ratio one half is the simplest ratio so if you think of just your basic uh, fractions as far as math goes then then we can understand this definition here so as far as a formula goes a chemical formula because the formula basically tells you the ratio of atoms that'll show up two different ways most commonly is either empirical or molecular and sometimes both empirical and molecular formulas are the exact same formula there'll be instances where that occurs and when that does we'll point that out in class and on these videos all right so then your molecular formula, um, essentially, uh, it, it's, it is your, it, you can think of it as your actual formula. Now, I know that's, uh, that's, that's a very basic watered-down definition, but let's, let's just think of it as an, an actual one. So I have an example here. Uh, Go back to your basic biology class. When, when biology teachers first introduced the matter and energy unit, the most common thing that's talked about is glucose. Basic sugar molecule that we know that our bodies take in carbohydrates and they're metabolized and broken down into sugars and the simplest sugar that you talked about that you talk about in your biology class, your freshman level biology class is glucose right and so we all know that that you know you're, you're taught c6 h 12 o6 well the question is 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 that the empirical or is that the molecular formula so here's how we can here's how we can think about that before they teach you this that you just memorize this around middle school age and that type of stuff and then you just have to really memorize this in biology but your biology teacher is also when you start getting into uh more specific terminology like they'll talk about monosaccharides, disaccharides, polysaccharides, right? So that's ring, those, those terms should ring a bell. They first show you this, right? They first show you this. And you look at this and you think of this, you know, we know this is water, this is carbon. So here is your carbon. And then when, when something has water, we think of it as being hydrated, right? So they then teach you that this is the formula for a carbohydrate, but they, they teach you that this is the simplest carbohydrate, CH2O, right? So then they go about and they'll say, okay, well, let's say we had CH2O where N equals 6. Right, so then you're told, wait a minute. Okay, so if I have if I have if n equals six, and n usually refers to the number of carbons, unless otherwise noted, you've learned that your your n value when you're talking about compound formulas and, and and such refers to the number of carbons that you're looking at in the chain. Right. So if you think about this, that means that you have six carbons. Well, if you have six carbons. But if the simplest ratio is one carbon to two hydrogens to one oxygen, then that means for every six carbons, these have to also change by that same, same amount, right? So that means here you just do a basic distributive sort of math. Six times this, six times this, and then six times that. Well, that would equal C, oops, that would equal C6, H12, O six. Six times this one is two, six. Six times this two is twelve. And six times this one right here, that's another six. So, so let's think about this right now. 
this versus this. If we look at the definitions we have up, up at the top, the simplest ratio right here is a CH2O. We would know this is an empirical formula. And then this would be the molecular formula, the actual formula for that particular sugar. So if n equals 4, it's going to be a different number. It's a different, but the ratio stays the same, but the actual molecular compound formula is different because you have a different n value, right? So that's, that, that's the basics of empirical molecular formulas. Another thing to note is that empirical formulas, we tend to write those for ionic compounds. And, oops, need to see. Ionic compounds. Okay, and so you should remember, you know, your type 1, your type 2 compounds. That's where you've got a metal and a non-metal. So you've got a cation and an anion that chemically combine together, right? So typically your um, ionic compounds, things will have, you know, your metals mixed with some sort of negatively charged anion are written in an empirical formula manner, right? And then molecular compounds... Uh, that, that we tend to call things that have non-metals in them molecules, and then things that tend to have metals in them, we call them compounds. They're both substances, but the terminology, and it's oftentimes interchanged back and forth very loosely, but <coughs> if you're in a chemistry lab, typically molecule refers to something where you have all non-metals, and then uh, compound refers to something that has metals in it, your ionic compounds. So that's a basic overview. Go back and review this if you need to, and then go on to the next video where I'm going to do some examples on calculating empirical and molecular formulas. Bye.